Hi friends, welcome to another episode of Liberate Lunations. My name is Eleonora and today we're going to be talking about the full moon in Aries, which happens on Wednesday, October 20th with its peak time of 7.55 a.m. and that's for Pacific Standard Time. Now this full moon ruled by obviously Aries, which is Mars, but still in Libra. Not super the best place for it, but we'll make it work no worries. Um, Mars is a planet of drive and action, obviously. So if anything, this full moon is really calling us to commit to letting go of the past. So without further ado, let's get into these aspects. For this donation, there's a couple aspects that I'm going to mention, which funnily enough, it's uh, both involving Mars, which is the ruler of this nation. Uh, first off is Mars in Libra is going to be trying Jupiter in Aquarius, who just stationed direct. So yay. Um, and even though we established that Mars is somewhat debilitated in Libra, um, Mars trying Jupiter usually indicates success. It indicates that whatever goal, thing, situation, plan we had in mind, um, if we execute it with the right energies and if we channel the right energies, um, there is high rate of success. Now for this one in particular, um, I want you to think actively of what you can let go. Mars is such an active planet, right? It's very much physical, it's very much the movement, the drive, the passion, the action, um, the impulsiveness. So one thing I want you to really recognize this nation is how you react to things, how people, places, emotions, situations. It can be material things as well. How do you react to these? That is going to really give you the answer of, am I reacting positively to this, which is going to in turn make me grow and make me a better person? Or am I reacting negatively to this, where it's tearing apart my um, my progress into becoming something better or stepping up to that next level. Um, sometimes we keep things around us that are low frequency and we don't even realize. Um, and we don't even pay attention to just like, oh, well, uh, I'm bothered and it's going to go away. Like, no, if you're bothered, really go within and be like, why am I being bothered? What's the root of me being bothered? Is it because this person said X, Y, Z? Or is it because the topic that they're bringing up brings something up and it goes into like a tangent of that? So I really want you to pay attention of like how things are making you feel around right now because some of the things that might be affecting you negatively and you don't really pay attention to them might be the things that are impeding you from getting where you are and really letting go of what is needed for you to level up. I mean, going back to the aspect of self of Mars trying Jupiter, the feeling of success. So take that to overcome difficulties and to really let go of like those nasty things that are just keeping you down. Now, the second aspect is Mars in Libra again is going to be square Pluto and Capricorn. I feel like we've had a lot of these Mars Pluto squares that we know what it is about struggle of power for sure. Um, conflicts. Um, you can come into conflict with, you know, a, a person of power, a figure of power, or there can be an internal conflict with like your internal power and what you let take over control of your emotions, of your subconscious, really. And sometimes Pluto has a, a, a tendency of making the very small things like a huge deal, not in a way that Jupiter touches everything that expands, but making something so small almost viral. My best advice for Pluto, for Mars Pluto squares, is to keep yourself in check. Um, you really can't control anything that's outside of you. Um, you can't control any external forces. You can't control how people react to you. The only thing you can control is yourself, how you react and how you put yourself out there. So really try to steer clear of confrontation and conflict. Um, even though I feel like that's going to be a really hard thing for everybody to do in general. There's a lot of uh, friction in the energy right now. So the smallest thing can blow up. So it really is just like, all right, I'm just going to be in here. I'm just going to be in here, in here, in here, doing the inner work, doing the self work. Um, Cause then that's going to reflect externally into 
a more positive, peaceful vibe. All right, now I'm going to pull a card for you guys. As usual, this is an energy we can lean into or a message that we need to hear um, for this full moon in Aries. So let's see what we got. All right. These cards were going kind of crazy, you guys. Half the deck almost fell off my hand, but I got, oh, I guess I got three cards. I thought I got two. <laughs> we got the first house. We got Ascendant, kind of redundant, and we got Ceres. Okay, I'm going to touch on these two, Ooh, on these two first, which is basically the same thing. Your Ascendant is always your first house, the first house cusp, whether you use whole sign, Placidus, whatever uh, house system you use, first house Ascendant, it is what it is. Um, this is really about you. It's about you. And remember, I was telling you about these those external forces. So for those of you who don't really know astrology like that, um, first house is usually indicates the self. And the birth chart is the most personal part of ourselves, um, usually what indicates our body, um, how we reflect ourselves to the outer world, how people perceive us as well. Um, so you know sometimes when you meet people, your first impression is different from who they really are. That might be your ascendant, the energy that they're giving off first impression. Anyway, this is really about you. How do your internal forces translate to the external. Again, with what I said, cleaning out the trash, you can really tell when people have really been doing the internal work and the self work because it really translates into their relationships, how they talk to people, how they speak to people, how they treat people, how they treat themselves, how they treat inanimate objects, how they treat animals, how they treat everything. Um, so this really wants you to focus on yourself. And also, you can think of what you want people to externally perceive you as like what things do you want to get rid of so that people are like, Oh, I want, you know, I, I don't want to be perceived as this, for example, angry, resentful person. So what do you need to do? You know, probably clear some past trauma around those things that left you scarred about around those people that you feel kind of still attached to in some point if you're holding a burden you're still attaching your energy to that situation and those people and then we have Ceres again you guys know I don't really work with asteroids um that much so we're gonna see what Ceres has to say in our little beautiful book okay so Ceres is usually the mother its symbols are grains nature seasons motherhood full moon um, keywords, nurturing, abundance, unconditional love, rage, grief, loss, beauty. Um, that's a spectrum of things. <laughs> okay. So in a reading, things are abundant in your life right now. And the potential for reaching your goals is at its peak. You just need to stay focused on the things that matter most to you. Don't let minor distractions get in the way of that or influence your decisions. You know what is best for you, even if it doesn't make sense to anyone else. If you're going through a low emotional period, do your best to appreciate the beauty in every day. Eat nourishing foods and make beautiful art. Go for walks and reconnect with nature. Spend time with your loved ones doing things that matter. Material items and overindulgence will not serve you right now. So avoid emotional bingers. binges. Binges. Um... When we are children, our parents are supposed to take care of us. They should hug us when we are sad and feed us when we're hungry. At some point, we take over this parental role for ourselves. And if you're struggling getting things done, it could be that a wound from your upbringing is causing you to get in your own way. I'm not going to say anything else. All right, so for Crystal to recommend... Amethyst, 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 amethyst. I was trying to think of other more like super, not that amethyst is not super power because amethyst is amazing, but more of like, what's a good crystal to recommend? Amethyst, amethyst, just relax, relax. I feel like this full moon, I'm even feeling it. It's just like, we all need to take a chill pill, go within, because this is really not about anybody else, but ourselves. Um, Amethyst, you can find that at our shop. Um, lithium quartz would also be a good one just because it does actually have lithium, which helps relax is in um, anti-stress, um, anti-anxiety, you know, it just um, helps with uh, panic attacks as well. 
So just chilling, chilling crystals, definitely. Amethyst and lithium quartz are my main um, uh, recommendations for this lunation. Okay, so events to recommend. I have three slash four amazing events to recommend. The first one is going to be our embodied full moon ritual for women, which uh, all self-identifying women are welcome to this event. It's by Annalise. That's going to be on um, October 19th. That's a Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. at our Sherman Oaks location. This is a full moon ritual with more of like a... Um, um, body take as well. We're going to be moving our bodies, using the movement to release a lot of this, um, a lot of the blockages and a lot of the things that we need to release this full moon, which I think it's absolutely great, especially because Aries is very physical. Um, so I think having a phys some physical movement to involve with this full moon would be great. So we're having that on Tuesday, October 19th at 6.30 p.m. That's in person again at our Sherman Oaks location. Second of all, we have a body tapping and acupressure massage meditation on the day of the full moon, which is Wednesday, October 20th. This event is going to be at 7 p.m. again at our Sherman Oaks location. This is a great event. It features body tapping, EFT, emotional tapping which helps release blockages. You tap certain um, meridians, like energy points in your body that help very physically release blockages. Um, again, that's on Wednesday, October 20th at 7 p.m. at our Sherman Oaks location. Last but not least, we have a Aries Full Moon Women's Circle with Kirsten Karat. Um, we're having one on Wednesday, October 20th at 12 p.m., which is the live stream. Um, so if you can't make it live, you get the 48 hour replay after so you can do the ritual at your own time. Um, and that's also for people that live outside of LA, outside of the country, wherever you are, you can attend that live stream. Otherwise we do um, have a same full moon uh, women's circle on October 21st, which that is a Thursday, the day after at 6.30 at our Sherman Oaks location. Um, so if you don't really wanna do it live stream, you can attend live on Thursday, the day after of the full moon, which will still be great, is great time to release anytime after the full moon when the moon is waning down. Great time to release all your thoughts. And um, Kirsten usually does sound therapy with it and then gives you little paper so you can write your intentions and then you burn it and you let it go. So embodied full moon um, ritual for women, Tuesday, October 19th at 6.30 at a Sherman Oaks location, body tapping and acupressure with Diana on Wednesday, October 20th um, at 7 p.m. at our Sherman Oaks location. And then the full moon uh, women's circle with Kirsten Thursday, October 21st at 6.30 p.m. at our Sherman Oaks location as well. And if not, live stream Wednesday, October 20th at 12 p.m. for the Women's Circle for uh, the full moon in Aries with Kirsten as well. All right, guys, that is it for this full moon in Aries. Wow, wow, wow. Um, let me know how you're feeling below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can let us know. You can always email us, DM us, call us at the shop. We are here with um, all your spiritual needs, really. So I'm sending everybody much, much love, many, many blessings, and have a very happy full moon in Aries. Energy healing is a form of therapy that helps uh, treat the person on all levels of their life, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, etherically, which is energetically and physically. I'm energy, this chair is energy, everything around us is energy. Uh, when we you receive an energy healing session, it's a transmission of life force. There are a lot of techniques that we can use to balance the energy field. Uh, regardless of the practitioner, there are certain ways in which each of us can connect to and help the client um, rebalance whatever it is that's going on in their energy field that is creating dis-ease or discomfort in their lives. 
We work with you both in person and remote. Energy healing is good for everything. So you can use it to manifest something. You can use it to uh, treat a, an ailment, whether it's something physical, mental, emotional. And we cleanse your chakras, balance you, clear out stress, physical issues, worry, fear, trauma, anxiety. Release cords, release things in your life or in your body temple that are keeping you from moving forward. I normally suggest that people get energy healing whenever they feel that they need it. A healing energy work should be done on a regular basis, like taking a shower. If you're watching this and it crosses your mind, hmm, out of curiosity, get a healing. You're being called to it, 